I have a slight confession. I am old. But I noticed that all the kids are doing tier lists on YouTube, so I figured why don't I try and steal a little bit of that youthful exuberance and do one myself. So today, we are gonna do a tier list for chest exercises. Let's get to it. What's up everybody, Darren Starr here. Thanks for joining me today. If you have seen tier list videos before, you know what we're doing here. For the uninitiated, what I'm gonna do is take, for today, every chest exercise that I have a video for on my YouTube channel, and we're gonna rank them according to tiers, starting with S, which will stand for super, superior, superb, whatever, and then letter grades beyond that, A through F. We're gonna find out what's good, what's bad. This is my opinion. So you can do this as well. I've actually saved this on tiermaker.com so that you can go through and rank your own tier list if you want to. My rationale and reasoning behind this is going to be coming from the perspective of a coach, someone who writes a lot of programs, and someone who is a lifter themselves with a right shoulder that's a little iffy and kind of gives them some grief on some stuff. I'm gonna give you my perspective based on those criteria. So your tier list will look different from mine, that's okay. This is all opinion, it's all subjective, it's just for fun, and I'm hoping you learn something along the way because I'm gonna explain a lot about why I do and don't like certain things. So let's go. Take a look at it, here we go. So I have all the thumbnails here. These are all the videos that I have posted for chest on my YouTube channel. So we're just gonna take them in order here. Starting with the barbell decline press. That's the first one. So we could put this up in the S tier or anywhere A, B, C, D, or F. What letter grade are we gonna give a barbell decline press? How about D for decline? So why is that? Well, here's the thing. Like pressing angle matters a lot less than you might think the grip that you have on the bar matters more than the angle at which you're set up. Uh, decline, I find it to be a little bit cumbersome. It's awkward, it's unusual. The quality of decline benches varies a lot. Some of them are fixed at maybe an angle that is less than optimal. Some are adjustable. How do you know, like should it be a steep decline, a fairly shallow decline, what? You know, the blood rushes to your head while you're doing it. Every time you get in there, you're like, okay, hold on, which way is up? How do I press to actually get this thing going up? It's one of those things where if you did it more often, you would get better at it and it would get more comfortable. The problem is I don't find there's enough value in a decline press to do it all the time. So I'm gonna put that on the D tier and call it good. Now, flat bench dumbbell press. I wanna initiate a little bit of a system here where I'm going to start to dock things based on things that give me issues with it and reasons why I can't do an exercise very well. And the flat bench dumbbell press gets two, it gets two docks. So typically I would say this is probably an A tier exercise. For me personally, it's a C tier. And I'm not gonna lie, when I program stuff for clients, I do have like my own personal opinion kind of biases things a little bit. So I don't program as much flat bench dumbbell press for clients as a lot of people do. I mean, you know, if you want to, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, uh, you know, there's a lot of exercises. Is there anything magical about that one? No, it's good, it's solid. I don't like it for two reasons. First of all, carrying heavy dumbbells and going back onto the bench, that puts a lot of strain on my abdominal hernias, which is not good for me. And so that's just a compromised position that I like to avoid as much as possible. Now, a flat bench fly, the dumbbells are lighter. I can go back and do that, it's less of a concern. But with heavy dumbbells, if I'm pushing 90s or 100s, it's just like, ugh, you know, it, it feels a little unsecure. So I'm not a big fan of that. And the other thing is, uh, for the weight that I have to move on this exercise in order for it to really feel engaged, my, my shoulder hates it. So it gets uh, basically a two letter grade deduction, like a 20% knock on your score there, just for those two things. So I'm putting that in the C tier. Now flat bench dumbbell fly, I did mention before, this one does not, uh, does not give me hernia anxiety the same way that a press does, just because the weights are lighter. I'm gonna stick this in B tier, um, just because uh, as far as fly movements go, it's okay. Um, I actually get more out of an incline bench fly. So um, let's put that here and let's take incline bench fly out of there and just stick that in A tier. I like that. If I'm gonna do a dumbbell fly, I'm gonna do it on an incline bench. It's not the greatest fly movement for me. It's good, it's solid. It's a fairly regular staple in my routine for chest. I like it. I like incline and I'm talking about a 30, 30 degree incline here. Nothing drastic, 45 is just too high. Um, at that point, you're really kind of confusing your body as to like, okay, what's supposed to be working here? With a 30 degree angle, that's great. I like that a lot better than a flat bench for me. Floor press, okay, we gotta pop the cherry on the F tier for the floor press. Uh, 
I have programmed a floor press before. I'm not too proud to admit it. As I go through and I have, I have a lot of programs that I've written that I revisit and send out to clients. Um, and uh, I go through those periodically and update them, update them to kind of more reflect my current thinking. And if I come across a floor press in one at this point, I'm like, ooh, let's find something else for that. You know, we all grow and our opinions change over time. Floor press sucks. That's all there is to it. So you can see in the thumbnail there, or maybe you can't, um, that's me doing it with my back supported on an incline bench. And then my elbows are kind of flared out a little bit. So they hit the bench here, simulating if I was doing it on a floor. So the idea is your elbows land on the floor. It's designed to limit your range of motion. And the thing is you're limiting a very valuable range of motion, which is the stretch position. Uh, there might be a reason why you'd want to do this if you're trying to work through a sticking point on a barbell bench press um, for powerlifting or something like that. I honestly think there are probably better ways that you could do it for that. It's one of those stereotypical like, oh, we need an accessory work and we're working on our bench press. Well, let's do a floor press because they've been doing that since the 1950s. Doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean it's smart. So it's a pretty shitty exercise. I'm going to say no thanks on that one. Hex press. Um, for those playing along at home, a hex press is where you've got two dumbbells and you jam them together like this and you bring them down and then you press up from there. Uh, it's been called other things. I've heard it referred to as a champagne press as well. So whatever you want to call it, that's an A-tier exercise for me. As far as dumbbell presses go, possibly my favorite one. Possibly my favorite. For me, just by virtue of the fact that I usually do this on an incline, and this is one of the few incline exercises that I'll actually do at a 45 degree incline. Like what I want to do there is really pinch my shoulders back, lift the chest, lift the sternum, and really try and like see the chest heave up as I press. And I can really kind of develop that visual connection with what's going on. And it really deepens the proprioception with it as well. So I get a really, really great stimulus out of a hex press. Absolutely my favorite. Do that a little bit of a higher incline than most other exercises. I don't go super heavy with it. Like I'll typically use, you know, if I'm going to, my, my pressing isn't really strong. If my shoulder's happy, um, I can do incline presses with like 90s, 95 for a decent number of reps. The hex press, I'm probably going to do like in the 45 to 55 range. So a little bit lighter weight, a little bit less strain on the joints, really, really great stimulus. So the stimulus to fatigue ratio on this one is super high. I'm a massive fan of it. Incline bench cable fly. So this is another one that I have to give a situational grade to. Um, so incline bench cable fly, where do we want to stick this one? I tell you what, I'm going to stick it in the B tier. I'm a big fan. It, it loses a letter grade for being such a fucking pain in the ass to set up. Like you got to wheel a bench over to the cables and God forbid you get a bench with a really squeaky wheel and like everyone in the gym is looking at you while you're doing it. Like, great. We've only got three benches up here. You're taking one halfway across the gym to go do that. You stupid asshole. So you're getting the dirty looks from people. It's not fun. Now, if, if there was a gym where they had a cable set up and there was a bench just bolted in the middle of it that never moved, I might consider making this an S tier exercise. Like the stimulus to fatigue ratio on this one is really good. It's an easy A, borderline S for me. Uh, I really love it. It's just the hassle and the inconvenience of setting it up. I will still do it. I just won't do it regularly. And I won't do it in certain gyms just because sometimes the benches and the cables are just too far apart and it's just a pain in the ass. So uh, sometimes just situationally not worth it. For that reason, I also don't program it as much as I might like to just because I don't know how people's gyms are set up and I might be asking them to do something that I wouldn't want to do myself just because of the logistical nightmare of doing this in some places. Incline bench dumbbell press. I'm going to give this a, uh, this is a B tier for me. So, you know, we, we started with the flat bench press here at A and we knocked it two letter grades. I'm knocking this one because it's still, the shoulder for me is still an issue. So, um, I will occasionally do this just to kind of test the range of motion and see how it feels. I'm going to do this at about 60 to 70% of what a good working weight would be. And usually my shoulder at that point is like, okay, we're getting a little stimulus here. We're getting a little bit of a pump going. Um, this is a great warm up exercise, like do three sets of this at a relatively light weight and then move on to the stuff where I know I can push heavier and have it feel good. So it does drive a really good stimulus for me. It's a really good blood flow generator. I like it for that. Um, but as far as like doing hard, heavy working sets to failure, my shoulders like, no, man, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So I tend to, uh, I tend to not. I tend to not. Now, incline Smith machine press. You might think like, Darren, you're being really stingy with the S tier. You must have a really high threshold. I do, but this breaks it. So incline Smith machine press is going in the S tier. Um, it is 
um, one of my all-time faves. Now, it is a little bit of a pain. Again, some gyms just getting a bench over to the Smith machine, depending on where things are set up, can be a real pain. One of the gyms that I go to, Club Four, um, you'd have to like wheel it through uh, a leg room space and into another space. And it's like, ugh, yeah, there's only one Smith machine anyway. It's just, it's still kind of a pain in the butt. I do love it though. And um, it's one of those where the stimulus uh, to fatigue ratio on this one, the quality of the stimulus is so good, it's worth the hassle 10 times out of 10. Um, the thing that I like about this versus um, we'll get to, actually, let's just do them now, a barbell flat press and an incline um, barbell press also. So a barbell flat press, for me, that is a D tier exercise. I'm not a fan. And a barbell incline press, honestly, I'm, I'm like, is it B, is it C? For me, it's C. Uh, so again, the barbell flat press, I have never found to be a very great stimulus overall. It's the ultimate ego lift. Um, it's what everybody wants to know. What do you bench? Honestly, on a good day, I bench about, I, I don't bench my body weight and it's because of the shoulder largely. Um, and because the barbell really fixes your grip, you have no flexibility in how you hold the weight. It's, it, it's you know, how wide do you want it? That's it. You can't pronate or anything like that at all. Um, sorry, you can't supinate at all. And you also, like the bar has to be... Um, like your your center of, of mass and where you support it has to be directly under the weight of the bar. You can't shift it forward or back at all like you can on a Smith machine. That's one of the great things there where if I'm on a Smith machine, I can, you know, if, if here's the bar, I can kind of wiggle my body a little bit. So I'm like pushing just up a little bit like this or maybe just down a little bit more like this. You can't really do that on a barbell with a free weight. The Smith machine, because it's fixed, the movement path is fixed, the machine weighs a fuck ton. So you can like push it in a direction that's not just straight up and you can allow a shoulder that's a little pissy to get in a little bit more of a happy spot. So I've got to really like micro fine tune my positioning on the bench. But when I do, it's happy, the shoulder performs well and the stimulus is great on top of that as well. Um, for the incline press, where did I put it? A barbell incline press. I tried this for the first time in a long time, a couple of weeks ago. And I did, I started with 95 pounds. So 25 on each side felt okay. Shoulder was a little, eh, not really super thrilled with this. Um, and I went to 135 from there. I'm like, yeah, okay. It's maybe a little, little less good here. I tried 155. I got two reps. I'm like, I'm going to kill myself trying this. I'm going to bust my shoulder completely. Uh, it's just, it's, it's terrible for me. And it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I can't adjust the rotation of my grip at all. I'm doing this off camera. Where's the camera doing that? I can't adjust that angle at all. And also I can't adjust my positioning relative, my, like my body's position relative to the bar like I can in the Smith machine. So for me, the Smith all the way, I love it. Um, low pulley cable fly. For me, this one gets a great stimulus. I'm giving this A tier all the way. So this is pulley set all the way down at the floor. And the correct way to do this, how you really want to, um, that was the, uh, the lazy trainer's version of rolling up his sleeves. I'm kicking my uh, chair arms out of the way. You want to get so that your, your cable weight stacks are to either side. Take one giant step forward so the weights are actually off to the sides but also behind you a bit. And then stick the chest up. Like really arch your back. Stick your chest up as high as you can and bring everything together like this. And you should see, again, the pecs kind of heave up as you do that. That's what you're looking for to know that you're really engaged here. Um, I don't go heavy enough on this that it requires me to have an offset stance. I just do both, both feet together to really focus on the most high quality engagement that I can possibly get with this exercise. But that low, low pulley cable fly, that's all, pretty much always a home run exercise for me. I always have a good time with that one. Um, neutral grip dumbbell press. What do we think about a neutral grip dumbbell press? Honestly, I'm going to call that a B tier. Um, I would say like, w would I say that's uh, about as effective as an incline press for me? Yeah. Being neutral grip, it's a little bit more tricep. You know, your elbows are going to be a little bit tighter into the body. So the chest stimulus isn't quite as good. My shoulder's pretty happy with it. The image here, is, the thumbnail is a flat bench. I would probably do this at a low incline, like a 15 degree incline, so it's not quite flat, but pretty close to it. Reasonable stimulus. It's one of those like, yeah, not my favorite. Am I ever gonna choose that over a hex press? Probably not, probably not. 
Um, I find the hex press, because you can apply that force of the two dumbbells into each other, you can really nail that adduction. Think of like the, uh, the same motion of like a fly. So you do a fly and then you do like an isometric squeeze right there as you press in and out. So uh, a little extra sauce on the hex press there. I like that. So that gets a big edge over the neutral grip press. Pec deck fly. Okay, let's talk pec deck fly here. I got to tell you, it, I, I want to compare this to a cable fly. So I've got that over there too. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a pec deck fly. I'm, I'm going to do a three-way comparison here. You ready for this? Mm, sounds dirty. Pec deck fly is going to be B tier. Cable fly is going to be an A tier. But do I have it here? Where is it? Cable crossover. That's going to be an S tier for me. It's our second S tier. So the pec deck fly, the problem with this is it's very machine dependent. You know, some machines are, are really well designed. It has to do with like just the friction of the machine, how smooth it is. Typically you can get enough of a stretch on this. You can get more of a stretch than you might possibly need with it. Um, so that's not really an issue. It's also like, you know, can you get, can you get a good grip on the handles and get the seat position just right to where, you know, you feel like you're really nailing it? You know, is it a machine where you feel the stimulus better if you're leaning forward away from the seat or if you really like dig back into it and lift the chest up? It's just very hit or miss. Um, it's usually more of a hit than a miss. It's still a good exercise, but it's very machine dependent. Um, the cable fly, exact same exercise, except you've got the ability to move in space. You've got the ability to adjust the uh, pulleys up and down usually. So you can, you know, if you want them high, if you want them at shoulder height, if you want them a little lower than shoulder height, not all the way down at the ground because that's a different exercise. Um, you've got some ability there to change um, how you want it to get the best stimulus you possibly can. So then a cable crossover has all that same stuff, except then we are taking um, the range of motion and we're bringing each hand so that it has the ability to come across the midline of the body. And if you play around with that, like just, you know, go ahead and feel yourself up right now. I give you permission to do it. Uh, technically, you can call this self-palpation. So if you want to tell your significant other what you're doing, there's the vocabulary to use. So put your hand on a pec and then just, you know, kind of try and flex it under some tension as you move, simulating the cable fly. And you can kind of feel it, it tenses up, it gets hard. Okay, cool. Now what happens if you bring it all the way across the midline of the body? Holy crap, it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter still. That added range of motion is a huge benefit. The only downside is it makes your set take twice as long because you're doing, you know, basically, for example, 20 reps instead of 10, 10 for each side. Uh, but otherwise, there's no reason not to do that. You still get the great stretch. You get a shorter position, a harder squeeze um, on the contraction. It's awesome. So the cable crossover is great for that. Similarly, I guess we're not doing this in order. I am giving uh, a single arm pec deck fly. I'm going to put that in the A tier here. So pec deck fly, single arm, again, same thing, greater range of motion here. I realize now you just didn't see that picture in picture. Here it was again. This is in, in slow motion replay. I think I'm going to put that in the A tier. There we go. So single arm pec deck fly. Again, that range of motion where you can take the hand across the midline of the body, get the pec into a shorter position still. Ah, awesome. Love that. Love that. Pec pulse. Are we ready to talk about a pec pulse? I guess we are. Um, I don't know if anybody knows what a pec pulse is. As far as I know, it's my own creation. I've not seen anybody else use it. I look like I'm about 25 years old in that thumbnail. So I look like I'm about 14, realistically. I'm gonna put this in A tier. I am partial to it just because it was my own creativity that sparked it. Maybe somebody else has, has done this movement as well. Uh, if so, we arrived at it independent of one another. I can't claim credit for it, except well, I'm going to. So um, I think it's mine. I don't know. The, the idea behind a pec pulse, what it is, let me uh, proverbially roll up the sleeves again. The idea is if you imagine a hula hoop that's around your waist at about like say four to six inches um, away from you, what you want to do is envision a dumbbell that's on that and using that as a track. And you're basically just using your arm to slide the dumbbell along that hula hoop track. So, and as you do it, you want to kind of, you know, internally rotate your hand, bring it around to the front. So you're going to retract the shoulder and protract the shoulder internally rotate and then shrug just a little bit at the top as well. So doing that, there's like, and I find also if you like lean towards the side that you're working. So if I'm working the left side, I kind of lean down to the left, shoulder back, shoulder front, 
internally rotate, shrug just a little bit, huge contraction in the pec in doing that. Um, the idea here is you just have a weight for a stimulus, like a 20 to 30 pound dumbbell, it doesn't really matter what it is, you're really just going for the squeeze. And so this is a great activation movement for me. Um, this has a lot in common with another exercise that I'll do next, um, which it's kind of like a troubleshooter for me. If I'm like starting to work out and just struggling with engagement, struggling with blood flow, struggling with connection and proprioception, I'm going to just interrupt things and just do a couple sets of a pec pulse because it is one of those home run exercises that always works. It always gets the stimulus the where, where I want it to be. So um, in, in that, it is very similar to a Ven press. Same thing. And a Ven press, like, I don't know if I want to put that in A tier or S tier. I'm going to put it in S tier and just be controversial. So Ven press, it probably has other names. I don't know. This is uh, where... You know, you have a weight like this. It could be a dumbbell that you're holding like I am in the thumbnail there or a couple of plates like this. Um, but you just, you know, squeeze like this and then out and in, out and as you squeeze. So you don't want to hold something. So you don't want a plate that you can just grab by the handles like this. You want something where it's the flat of your hands squeezing in on it. So you get that, that adduction again, which, you know, without doing anything is an isometric movement, but then you're going out and then back in with it. So that's another one where it is, um, that's a home run for me. If I'm struggling with engagement, I'm always gonna just go to a Venn press and be like, let's get this thing back on the tracks. Uh, and it, it never fails. Pronated dumbbell fly. So it's pictured here as a flat bench. We have flat bench dumbbell fly in the B tier, which means this has to go in the A tier because I do find it superior. Pronated, meaning instead of a fly like this, you're doing a fly like this. What does that do for us? Well, in the stretch position, as you take everything out to the sides, with a pronated grip, um, with less range of motion, you will get a similar stretch in your pec. Or said differently, um, with the same range of motion, you'll get a greater stretch in your pec. So this is one that's really good for people that have shoulders that give them some grief um, in that big stretch position. Um, if you want a little bit less range of motion from the shoulder, but to still get a good stretch on the pec, that's gonna do it. So a dumbbell fly, it's a standard staple exercise, always works, good news, and the pronation just makes it a little bit easier for people who have you know, some, some pissy shoulders. Single arm cable fly. So you know, I'm big on the single arm stuff here, right? Single arm pec deck fly is here. You know, I'm big fan of you know, the stuff that goes across the body like the cable crossover as well. So where am I gonna stick a single arm cable fly? Well this, I don't know, C or D tier, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and say D tier. Um, it's a novelty exercise, realistically. Like, it doesn't do anything that you can't do on a pec deck where you're a little bit more stable. Um, I, I find... Uh, let me change that. I'm going to say, say C tier instead. D seems a little harsh. It's just not a favorite. It's, if you haven't done it before, it's one of those like, oh, this is different. This feels kind of cool. And then after you've done it a couple times, you're like, yeah, it kind of wears out its welcome. I don't need to do that again. Yeah, so I'll program it very, very sporadically just for that effect. Like, hey, it's something different. Check this out. But not something that I'm going to go back to on the regular. Wide grip Smith machine press. <laughs> this is one where this is an old video that I recorded. I'm going to give it a D for a couple of reasons. First of all, the wide grip would annoy my shoulder today the way that it didn't back when I recorded this video. Also in the thumbnail, that bench is at way too high of an incline. It's at like a 45 degree incline, which is too high for this. And so I'm putting it on the D tier. I'm knocking myself, I'm giving myself points off for that. Machine chest press. Now this is, uh, it says universal here, which does not mean a universal brand machine, but it just means like all machine chest pressed together. How would we categorize those? I'm gonna put it in S tier. Now, there are some crappy machine presses, but there are some good ones, and they offer the same advantage here that the Smith machine does in that you can micro-adjust your position in the machine to really get the exact stimulus you want. It's just much more possible to do that here than versus any kind of free weight option. Um, there's enough machines available, like, you know, if I went to... The Gold's Gym that I went to today, how many chest press machines are? Well, there's a Hammer Strength, Flat and Incline. There's an Atlantis um, Incline. It's at an incline. It actually presses at a flat angle. There's a Cybex Eagle chest press. There is a Hammer Strength MTS press. Um, and there's one more that I don't know what brand it is. It might be like a Nautilus or something. Like there's six machine chest presses in that one gym. Um, if I went to club four, there are four or five 
machine chest presses. Like when you've got that many options and there's, there's usually that many options in most gyms, like you, you can find one that's going to give you an awesome stimulus and that you can micro adjust to just really get exactly the way that you want it. So, um, just because you don't have to stabilize things. You can just get under it and push. Um, you can find exactly the right angle that you want to stimulate the fibers that you're looking for. A chest press machine, generally S tier, absolutely. Even a bad one is still pretty decent. Cable adduction, so what is an adduction? So let's roll up the sleeves again. Adduction is where you start in a cable fly position and instead of going out here like this, you come down like this and your hands just meet in front of you here. So really good stimulus on the pec as well. Still, um, it does have the ability if you, if you really get high up in that stretch position to bring in more lat than you might need, um, but not a huge concern. Um, I find it to be a really good stimulus. Um, honestly, I like it every bit as much as a cable fly. Sometimes I'll superset the two just to, you know, give my body a little bit of a b you know which of these stimulus feels better and so i might like start off with a superset of um, both of these exercises do that twice and then whichever one feels the best stimulus i might then do another two sets of that one alone big fan big fan close grip bench press that's going in the d tier because we're doing chest exercises if we were talking about tricep exercises i would be struggling on where to put that a versus s tier it's one of those two for a chest exercise though it's bullshit like not now no like yes it works the chest but it's it's primarily a tricep mover and the way that i would do it i would really position myself differently under the bar in the smith machine um, to really leverage the tricep activation on this and so that's what i'm accustomed to doing so would i ever do this on chest day um, no not unless it was the last exercise for chest and i was doing triceps immediately after in which case yeah, it might work well to bridge the two together. In fact, for that, I might take it up to C tier just because that is a pretty unique um, use case. But it could have some value for that for sure. Last two, cross body machine press. This is going to um, round out the D tier here. <laughs> so this is the kind of thing where this cross body press is where you're in the chest press machine. But instead of doing this, you turn to the side and you go, uh, uh, uh. short range of motion, no stretch at all. It's just like, squeeze 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 so not everything has to have a stretch you know a lot of these movements that i'm a really big fan of don't have a stretch you know a ven press doesn't have a stretch really to speak of but for a, a machine press you want that stretch absolutely and this is totally a novelty exercise like you do this coaches have people do this because hey i haven't done this before this is cool right it's the novelty of it. It's not terribly productive. Um, you can find better ways to spend your time. Again, this is one of those things that as coaches, uh, smart coaches, will throw this at people like, here, try something new. And what I would want to do in throwing this at somebody is have them experience like, oh, okay, you know, that contraction feels different. How can I take that feeling and then translate that to other exercises? Like, how can I get better at other stuff by having introduced this first? Um, I think there's tremendous value in experimenting with things that might be maybe suboptimal or not the greatest exercise because they could spark something that allows you to really increase your engagement in other exercises. So that leaves us with a dumbbell pullover. And you know, that floor press is awful comfortable, uh, awfully lonely here in the F tier. So we're gonna throw the dumbbell pullover in there with it. Great lat exercise, M moderately good lat exercise. Okay lat exercise terrible pec exercise like yeah i get it i get that the pec works as you're doing this uh, raise your hand out there if you get a great stimulus from doing a dumbbell pullover in the pecs anybody anybody maybe it's just me like i am aware that the pecs are working doing this i never feel what they are doing like lats all day long absolutely I mean, I would much rather do a machine pullover, assuming there's a good one available, than a dumbbell pullover. Um, but still, it's like for chest, no, no. Especially like, look at everything in the S tier, look at everything in the A tier, look at everything in the B tier. Are you gonna tell me that a dumbbell pullover competes with any of that stuff? Like realistically, you know, except for very situational uses, I would not touch anything outside of the first three tiers. There's so much stuff in there, you could keep yourself occupied for years just with those, what is it, nine, eight that's 17 exercises up there like that's a ton that's all you need 
That's all you need. You could pretend that nothing else exists. Now, other things do exist. I know there are exercises on here that, uh, exercises for chess that are not up here. Again, this is just what I had um, thumbnails for that I had done videos for, and I figured it was going to be comprehensive enough. So that is my tier list. What does yours look like? Do you disagree with anything on here? I know you do. I know, I know people are going to be like, dude, I love a pullover. You're on crack. I don't know what your problem is. Or, you know, a flat bench dumbbell press in the C tier. I am unsubscribing right now. You're a fucking idiot. And you know what? I'd say fair play. Except I did say this was all opinion. This is not fact. This is not universal. This is my opinion. And for me, flat bench dumbbell press, I struggle to put it in the C tier. I almost kind of want to retroactively go back and put it in the D tier now. It's just I will never do it. No, it's just an absolute no of an exercise for me. So anyway, that's my list. Um, I, I plan on coming back and doing more of these for other muscle groups, assuming anybody watches this one for starters. So if you like this, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want to see next. Tell me what you agree, disagree with, etc. Other stuff. What do we got? Uh, websites, uh, five star digital should be here. Five star physique should be here. Social media, Instagram at Darren underscore star, my podcast at the drop set podcast and on TikTok at Darren underscore star as well. So check me out there. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it and catch you next time.